Thank you. Friends, did you see that? We'll get back to that. Welcome back to Church Online, friends. My name is Ibuko. I hope you've been staying safe. I hope you've been eating healthy, healthy meals, and lots and lots of fruits. Have you been drinking water? Because you actually need it. I know some of you love to take juice and freezer drinks. However, you need to take lots of water. If you're coughing or sneezing, how do you do that? Yes, you're right, into your elbow. Now friends, there's something important you have to always do. Pray always. Speaking of prayers, let us pray. Close your eyes and let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful Sunday. We thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We thank you for Jesus. We thank you for our parents. We thank you for our teachers. We thank you for children all over the world. We thank you for our churches. Lord Jesus, as we're about going into a good time with you, we ask for your presence always. We ask for wisdom and the spirit to understand what we're being taught today in Jesus' name. Amen. I hope you guys have been learning something new. It's summer season. You need to learn something. I will always say that. You need to learn something. You can't just be watching cartoons all day. Even if you feel that you need to watch movies, maybe you're very good at um, scripting. You learn to write scripts and create your stories. And you could have a role play with dad and mom. So now speaking of that, as I said before, I'm still learning to dance. I hope one day, maybe it's the hip hop, and I'll get to see some of you someday, very soon. We're going to teach, and if any of you know how to dance, maybe you can come to teach me, but I'm still learning to dance. I think maybe I'm learning salsa and the hip hop. Now friends, get ready, put on your dancing shoes, and before then, go get your Bibles, your journals, and your pen. Are you ready? Let's go praise God.
Welcome back, friends. I hope you had fun. I had fun dancing and praising the King of Kings. I need to do a recap of last week. Last week, Israel took us into a Bible adventure on the story of Gideon. Yes, Gideon, can you remember? Or you check your journals. I hope you've been keep, uh, taking notes. You all need to take notes, your big boys and big girls. Please do take notes. Gideon went to fight with just 300 men. God was with him. And the other side, the not nice people that were against them, they were, I think in their thousands, 300. And he won. And he didn't just fight with just weapons. I'm sure you know what he fought with. Yes, you're right. Now, what is faith? What is faith? Can you remember? Okay, I'll link us back to our memory verse that Israel taught us last week. Hebrews 11.1. 1. Open your Bibles to Hebrews 11.1. 1. Hebrews can be found in the New Testament. Thank you. Hebrews 11.1. 1. The International Children Bible. Faith means being sure of the things we hope for and faith means knowing that something is real even if we don't see it. Friends, I don't know if any of you have tried what something on faith from last week's Sunday up to now. Believing in what you don't see, can you imagine? And that takes us to another story today. The story, our Bible adventure story, it's on the story of Esther. I can hear you say Esther. Yes, Esther. And we're going to into the book of Esther. Yes. Esther can be found in the Old Testament. Esther chapter 4. We will go back and forth like 3, 4, 5, maybe 6. We'll pick, pick some few verses. Then after today, during the week, you can pick a chapter each, each to study. But before then, I need you to give you a story because if we say we should start reading the old book of Esther, we won't leave here today. I would like to give a brief story about what, where Esther is coming from. Esther is actually a young, beautiful lady. Esther was a pretty lady. And guess what? In that country, in that city, the king, I think he had issues with his wife, maybe called her and didn't respond. But he was upset, so he called for the young ladies in the city to come and, oh no, he was ready to take another wife. He wanted another queen. So, friends, <laughs> Mordecai told Esther, Esther, you're going for that competition. I'm sure. What do you think, Esther? A slave? They were slaves. What do you think would have been going on in Esther's mind? If I was Esther, I would have said, hmm? Uncle, I think you're joking. Slave? Going before the king to compete with all the beautiful girls in town? No way. If I was Esther, boy. The Bible didn't really say anything about that. But Esther followed her uncle's decision. So she went in. And she was selected among the queens, the people that would come in. Like a competition beauty pageant, you know, when you wave your hand, you blow kisses like that. But they needed to be groomed. Esther was groomed. Groomed means well taken care of. Hair, skin, everything glowing well. So, guess what happened, friends? Esther was chosen. Hmm. That takes us to the story we are talking about today. Faith and courage. Mordecai told Esther to go. That was very courageous. And Esther obeyed. And... She won. She won, friends. She won. You can imagine if she had sobbed the way I said, oh, no, no way, uncle. I can't go. But she did it. She did it, friend. 
she was courageous. Her uncle, I give it to her uncle. So she became the queen. One day, let's open our Bibles to Esther 4 again. Esther 4, before Esther 4, let me just add that. Haman didn't like Mordecai. Do you know why, friends? Haman was always full of himself. Yes, he was in charge of so many things in the city. They made him in charge. But he was always full of himself and he wanted everyone to respect him. And respect, you can say good morning, bye, good day. But Haman wanted them to bow. What does the Bible say about that? Don't bow to any other God. We shouldn't be bowing to men. We can give them respect, but respect you don't have to. But Mordecai didn't do it. Haman was so upset. Upset means to be angry. Was angry. And he just said, no, we need to do something. He went to meet with his family and some of his friends. And they just, okay, we're good to deal with them. We'll take them out. On a specific day, I think the Jewish used to have celebration. And he said, we'll take them out. And Mordecai, Ed, that was, that's Esther's uncle. So he went, let's, that takes us to Esther 4, verse 1. Now Mordecai heard about all that has been done to show how upset he was, he tore his cloth. Then he put on a rough cloth and ashes and he went out into the city crying loudly and very sadly. Hmm. Do you know where he went? He went to the gate, the palace gate. He went there. Those days, to show that you are angry and you're sad, you just have to just look like you wear rags. So he went there and he went there. Someone gave, told Esther, you know Esther is actually in the palace. Just run to Esther. Guess what Esther? Your uncle is at the gate wearing rags. Crying, I'm sad, upset. And Esther wasn't so happy. My uncle, so she told them to get him clothing, to clothe him. But guess what, friends? As Mordecai was determined. He said, no, he didn't want it. He just wanted everyone to know that it was actually unfair to treat a Jewish like that. Jews like that. So, Esther, Mordecai sent someone to him. And Esther sent a servant uh, to tell Mordecai that the king, I can't go to the presence of the king because Mordecai sent a servant and told Esther that they are about to destroy us. They are going to take us out. That means kill. They are going to take us out. And you need to do something because there's a reason why God has placed you there. And friends, let's dive out a bit. You need to know when you're placed in a position, maybe a class captain, a sports captain, or any captain captain, make sure that you're humble. Try not to lord it over everyone. And that was what happened between Eman and Mordecai. So Esther went, sent the servant back and told to tell Mordecai that the king the king won't allow me to, they won't, you are not supposed to appear before the king without the king telling you to come to his presence. That if not, she's going to be dealt with. So Mordecai said, hmm, they're about to, there's a reason why you're there. So Esther now told a servant to tell Mordecai again that, I need you all to fast. Friends, you say fast. What's fast? It's not running fast. <laughs> it's like staying away from something you really love. And most of us like food. I like food too. Like food. And staying away, friends, guess what? For three days. Three days. Money, breakfast, no breakfast, no lunch, no dinner. One day, second day, third day. Can you do that? I think I've done that before. So it wasn't that easy, but the help of the Holy Spirit. But Esther did it. Esther did it. Friends, you need it at times when you need to communicate to God. Why did she do it? She knew that becoming a queen was just, was not by might. She knew there was someone, someone behind her, whom no one can feel, see. And that's God. So she knew that 
I need to go into his presence. I need to tell him what these people are trying to do with his children. And Esther, she told the servant, that was the servant told Mordecai that, now all of you, you have to join her, pray along as she does this. Friends, Esther did. Esther did. So, um, I'm reading from um, New International, New Living Translation. You have your journals. Good. And Esther replied, if it please the king, let the king and Haman come today to a banquet I have prepared for the king. And the king turned to his attendants and said, tell Haman to come quickly to a banquet. And what's a banquet? Like a feast, like a party, as Esther has requested. So the king and Emma went to Esther's banquet. What happened? That was the request. The king said, when she came before the king, the king asked, what do you want? She said, this is what I want. And this king gave it to her. Emma came. The first day, they ate, they had a nice time. But guess what, friends? While the king was sleeping at night, he was feeling disturbed, rolling on his bed, and just felt that there was something. Next thing, he just knew. Have I ever required him? Have I ever recognized Mordecai? I think I have not. So he called for his um, men and they confirmed. So he said, I know what to do. So the next day, a man walked into the palace and the king said, oh, good. What do you think is befitting? That means what should I give someone that's done so well for the country? And a man thought he was the one. So he said, hey, horse, let the person sit on the horse. Let the person wear your robe and wave to the city. Ride, take a ride around the country or the city. And the king said, good. Go and get that ready, done, for Mordecai. <gasps> what do you think would happen? <gasps> it was like, <sighs> Mordecai. I can imagine the expression on his face. He went, and they, you can imagine, he had to be beside Mordecai. Someone that didn't like Mordecai. Now, Mordecai was sitting on the horse and waving and doing just as Eman has planned. So, Eman went back home, upset, told his family, and said, and his friends, ah, no, 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 no. It was now very, very upset. He told, they were now getting ready to plant something. Um, um, they dug a pit, just create something that would just execute more like destroy Eman, um, Mordecai, so that no one will ever hear of him and maybe more of the Jews. And next thing, he went, they had to call him quickly. Let's go for the, because uh, Queen Esther asked for another banquet the next day. So they went and Esther put it to the queen, um, to the king, that um, someone wanted to destroy my people. Just told the king that they want, to, they want to kill my people and my family, my family. And the king was like, "Woo! What could that be?" He just said, "Amen." And the king was like. <gasps> A man started, he was shivering, scared, because he knew that the king was going to destroy him. So the king just stepped out into the garden. And by the time he came back in, I think while a man was fidgeting and all that, he fell into the queen's chair. And the king was like, ah, is it that you want to have something to do with my queen again? Get him out. And one servant said, oh, he has even prepared something for the Jewish to, to be killed. And... They took the man out, friends. They took him out. And Esther requested that the king change the decree. Because if it's not changed, it will still happen. Maybe another king when another king. And the king did that. What do you think? We need to appreciate Esther. She was courageous. She was courageous. She didn't do it by her might. She believed in God. She believed, she knew that there was someone that created heaven and earth that is with her. Just like the story in the Bible where we had Peter walking on waters. He saw Jesus walking on waters and Peter wanted to do the same. He believed at first, then later he started sinking. And that's what happened to most of us until Jesus came to his rescue. And it's okay. It's okay. Faith is not by our might. We have it. It's like a mustard seed, as Israel said last week. We have it, but we need to be very intentional. 
we need to know that we have, once you have God, you have Jesus as your savior, you can confront anything. I know some of you might have been bullied and you need to discuss it with your parents. Now that you are at home learning, for, doing online learning, you need to tell your parents so that you can, they can tell you and encourage you. But just know this, that with God, all things are possible. It can eat. With God, you, be, you become courageous. You become bold, just like Esther. And just like Peter at a point, but Jesus is always there. It's okay too, but you know you have to keep at it. You have to be intentional. How do you do that? Give your life to Christ. Have Jesus as a friend, as your savior. Two, you need to read the word of God, the Bible. The Bible is real and it's true. You need to read that every day. You need to create time for the Holy Spirit and also be intentional, keeping a godly community, be around people. And now that you're online, I know there might be cyber bullying. Do you understand that? People that might say some not nice things to you online, friends, you have to be careful. You know you have online rules. You have to be very careful. But just take, if it's a friend, take it aside. Talk to God about it. Talk, discuss with your parents and address it boldly. Now, if you want, you can't do this all by yourself. Yes, every one of us have a bit of God faith in us. But we need to. As I said, you need to give your life to Christ. If you're ready to give your life to Christ, please close your eyes and let's pray. Repeat this after me. Lord Jesus, thank you for going all the way to die on the cross for me. I accept what you did and I ask that you forgive me all my sins. I need you to come into my life and help me to live as your disciples. In Jesus' name, amen. Having Jesus in your life is the best thing ever. Now, we are going into our memory verse. Friends, are you ready? Our memory verse is taken from Hebrews 11.1. 11, 1. 1. ICB Bible. That's International Children's Bible. We have faith means being sure, being sure of the of things, things we hope for. for. And, and faith, faith means knowing that something is real even if we don't, we don't see it. Oh. Is that the piano there? Whoa, wow. Okay, friends. Can I have a torch? I need to get my books back, just like Esther. I need to be courageous. It took my book. I need to get it back. I love the piano. Hi. Hi. Um, Israel, please, can I have my book? What book? You, you snatched my book some minutes ago. Please? Oh, you mean this? Yes, Israel, can I have my book? Sorry, it's not yours anymore. It's mine now. Thank you. You gave it Israel. to me, remember? No, Israel. Israel, I can borrow you. Let me just finish reading. I'll give it back to you. But it's interesting. I'm enjoying this book. I've read it up to page 67. But Israel, do you know you're a very nice guy? I love your smiles. And you're so gifted with playing the keyboard. Really? Yes, you are. So maybe when I'm done with the book, I can give it to you. Please. When you're done, right? Yes. When would that be? Um, friends. A week. Just give me a week. Fine. That sounds like a plan. Okay. Thank you. But can I play this? Yes. Very soon. You're going to sing along. We have a song, a theme song, friend. Uncle Israel did that last week. Now let's join Israel to play the keyboard and sing along our theme song for this month. Do you remember? Israel. Let's go. One, Israel. two, go. You're teaching me, I have right? faith to move the mountain. I have faith to remove the tree. I have faith to defeat the giant. 
Even if it's like a mustard seed I have faith to move the mountain I have faith to remove a tree Friends, you can clap along I have faith to defeat a giant Even if it's like a mustard seed I have faith to calm the storm and to calm the raging seas I have faith to change the world Even if it's like a mustard seed I have faith to calm the storm And to calm the raging seas I have faith to change the world Even if it's like a mustard seed 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 Okay friends, see you next week. Bye! Bye!